the comeback to beat all comebacks. Mayo manager James Horan today leads his native county into an All-Ireland final for the fourth time. Keeping goal in his third final is Rob Henley after his many heroics against Dublin in the semi-final. In front of him, it's an unchanged full back line. So it's O'Hara, Keegan and Plunkett. In the half back line, Paddy Durkin and Stephen Cohen get to start. But the big news is that number 19, Oshin Mullen, is uh, going to take the centre-half back spot in place of Ende Hessian, who, of course, was picked originally to replace the injured Owen McLaughlin. As was the case in last December's All-Ireland final, the centre-field pairing is once again Mathieu Rouen and Conor Loftus. Aidan O'Shea, who was substituted in the semi-final, is restored to the starting 15, wears number 11 and captains the side with Brian Walsh replacing Darren McHale. It's a seventh All-Ireland final match for Kevin McLaughlin with the ever-dangerous Tommy Conroy and Ryan O'Donoghue manning the inside line and set to pose problems, you would think, for those Tyrone backs. Well, it's been a remarkable achievement for joint managers Fergal Logan and Brian Doher to bring this Tyrone side to an All-Ireland final in their first year in charge. Their goalkeeper is the very colourful Niall Morgan, expert shot stopper and reliable free taker. He's fronted by three men who played in the 2018, semi, uh, 2018 final, Michael McKernan, Niall McNamee and skipper Fawdy Hamsey. In the team's semi-final win over Kerry two weeks ago, Kieran McGeary was the man of the match, while in the Red Hands' last All-Ireland, Peter, Peter Hart was a penalty goal scorer. There's no shortage of physical strength in midfield, with Brian Kennedy and Con Kilpatrick hoping to use their attributes to good effect. Wing forward Conor Myler has been the team's go-to man when it comes to man-marking key opponents against Kerry. He was once again on top of his game. And leading the attack alongside Matty Donnelly, our ace attackers, Darren McCurry and Conor McKenna, who took the kingdom, of course, for a couple of goals here a fortnight ago. Mayo's subs bench today, well, they played a huge part in seeing off Dublin when James Horan decided on some drastic action. They have Enda Hessian, James Carr, Jordan Flynn and Darren Cohen all waiting for the call-up to leap into action. While Tyrone standby players look capable of turning a game as they did against the Munster champions. Cahal McShane, Derek Canavan, Tiernan McCann, all players of immense civility. The match referee, by the way, is Joe McQuillan and he is from Cavan. But There's the trophy, the Sam Maguire Cup. Where's it heading? And irrespective of the time or the date or the day, the All-Ireland final is Gaelic football's biggest occasion, the 134th final to be handled today by Joe McQuillan of Cavan. It's his fourth All-Ireland final in charge. He is David Goff and Brendan Cawley as his linesman, and the sideline official is Kieran Brannigan from County Down. So all set to go. And it'll be uh, Mayo who won the toss. Aidan O'Shea, the team captain, won it. Opted to play from right to left in the first half as Niall Morgan makes his way down towards the goal at Hill 16. And the referee has a word with the four men in the middle of the park. Dermot O'Connor goes in there to join Aidan O'Shea for the throw in alongside Brian Kennedy and Con Kilpatrick. The atmosphere building the whole time. Mayo have waited so long. Tyrone, underdogs in the minds of some people, have ideas of their own about winning the cup. 
but that first leap is won there by Aidan O'Shea, hoping to lay down a marker, kicking it in accurately as far as Tommy Conroy, and then straight into Peter Hart, getting it on his right and putting it over the bar. The opening point has taken about 16 seconds. What an absolute great score by Tommy Conroy, Jar. An unbelievable start, a direct ball in. Already O'Hore is picking up McCurry, Stephen Cohn is picking up Donnelly, Keegan is picking up Conor McKenna, Hamsey on Conroy, McKernan on O'Donoghue. They're the main matchups. A brilliant start by Mayo. And not a good start by the goalkeeper who didn't get that ball outside his own 20 metre line. Just in the build up to that one, Tommy Conroy went straight into Peter Hart. There was no whistle, play continued, and he was able to get his score. Mayo leading. It's key for Mayo to get the good start. You don't want Tyrone building a good start. They've started brilliantly, Ger. Little fumble there at the back and eventually held securely by Michael McKernan. Talked about handing it back to his goalkeeper and that's got off the back and it's got out for a 45. And Mayo have started this final with some intensity. It's unreal. Ryan O'Donoghue all season long. What a hard-working corner forward. Not only does he tackle, he works back to field. A brilliant start. A 45 to come, Henley up the field after kicking three miraculous ones in the last game. Here he is again. It's a great start for Mayo, Tyrone, oh, early on in the game, Jar, but it's a brilliant start for Mayo, you have to say. Little or no win to trouble him here this afternoon. The flags on the flagpoles immediately behind. Pretty limp at this stage. James Horan watching as his goalkeeper playing in his 30th ever championship match kicks. Hoping to draw it in there towards the right-hand side. Hasn't managed it. First wide of the game instead. It's always a bit of a risk. They're always difficult to make. Tyrone got away with that one. Looking now to try and get the ball into the other half of the field for the first time. That's a wayward-looking kick because David O'Connor should have been able to take it. Instead, it's pinched by Brian Kennedy, who did well, really well. Back here helping out is Michael O'Neill. Connor Myler made such an impact on the semi-final game once again it's Kieran McGeary covered so much ground in that particular semi-final looking to get it off and getting it away but the challenge has come in the referee says it wasn't a fair challenge so it's got to be a free kick for Tyrone ball in hand of uh, Niall Sludden a Dramore player kicking it in there Nicely done by Matty Donnelly, surrounded immediately there. Stephen Cohen trying to take it away from him. Donnelly had to let it loose, otherwise he'd be caught for overholding. And uh, lots and lots of Mayo players getting their bodies around it. Even though Connor was one of them, he's the one who was caught in the end. Fouled, and it's a free kick for the Connor champions. The pressure all over the pitch for Mayo has been outstanding. Morgan was forced long, only for Brian Kennedy doing so well at midfield. They're pushing up on kickouts, they're pressuring around the middle. It's what you expect from Mayo. Tyrone will need to settle. Oh, that's a very early yellow card, only three minutes in for Brian Kennedy, the Derry Lahan player. Michael Plunkett taking it out, a little bit wayward, gave an opportunity for Kennedy, the man who was just booked to get that one back. Con Kilpatrick got his hands on the ball for the first time, and now it's McGeary. Connor Myler again now. First time to set into an attacking position, first time for Darren McCurry to get his hands on ball. Holding it up, waiting for Conor McKenna to make the little run through a couple of defenders to him. They're patient, they'll take their time over it. Hamsey, back to McGeary again, looking to free up someone. Peter Hart knows this place so well that time. The wrong side of the upright, their first wide of the game also. Well, they were patient. This is what happened here earlier, and that's the foul by Brian Kennedy, hence the yellow card. Breaking through right now is Oshin Mullen. Mullen trying to pass it to a colleague, stopped by Michael O'Neill. Mullen goes again. Picked up here by Kevin McLaughlin. Got a great point in the semi final in the second half of that. Swung around there by Frank Burns. The referee immediately penalizing the Pomeroy man, and it's got to be a free in. It's all about pace, Jeffrey Mayo. Plunkett gave that ball away. They created a chance, they got bodies back, but Henley had the ball on the tee and they moved it up. It doesn't matter if they're kicking long, but they're running, they're sprinting, brought straight up the pitch. They cut. This is where Tyrone had to be careful. If Mayo are running at them and they're fouling all day, they're coughing up chances. Ryan O'Donoghue got a couple of points in last year's final. Looking for a bright start here. No Killian O'Connor, of course. He's taken on board many of those responsibilities from situations like this one here, and he's equal to it. 
and Mayo have themselves a second score. Massive following, as people have mentioned earlier on. Don't know where they got the tickets from, but my goodness, they're in a majority in Croke Park. Nalborg in kicking long once again, down there towards Kennedy. Got a very good touch to it, to McGeary, looking to try and get his way through. Stopped. Michael Plunkett committed the offence, however, in doing so. Free kick for Tyrone, and McGeary certainly felt that. That's Kennedy's second win at midfield, marking Matty Rowan, who has been outstanding this year. If Mayo can actually win those breaking balls, it'll put more pressure on Tyrone. But what a brilliant break by McGeary there. He's been key for Tyrone and great at going forward. That's the offence there committed by Michael Plunkett, the Ballantubber player. It brings Niall Morgan up for his chance to try and put over a score and get Tyrone's first of the day. Everybody remembers the... Uh, two points he got against Kerry because they bookended the first half of that semi-final man has played nearly 150 times in all competitions for Tyrone since his debut eight years ago so the 30 year old from Eden Dork looking to raise a cheer or two and that one has made it beautifully inch perfect great score fine free brilliant kick under pressure, an absolute brilliant kick. Henley came up before, same pressure and missed. That was a great kick by Morgan. And again, there's pressure applied here on the receiver, who is Matty Donnelly, or Matty uh, Ruan, rather. Lee Keegan now holding it for Matthew Ru Ruan once again to go forward, looking up to see just what's on, trying to thread this ball through, intended there for Ryder Donahue, picking it up. Running into challenges immediately, stolen back by Ronan McNamee, and uh, I don't know who fouls him. Free kick for Tyrone. No sweeper by Tyrone. Ger Frank Burns is marking Diomond O'Connor. He drops when he can, but no out and out sweeper by Tyrone. They're pushing up on Mayo. Con Kilpatrick, another Eden Dork player. Holding, waiting, teasing. Tommy Conroy, who now goes chasing after him, got in the hand, didn't, didn't get the ball, however. Ronan McNamee, remember in the semi-final, everybody in the full back line managed to score in that game, including the captain here, Porrick Hamsey, who's done it again. And the teams are level for the first time. Yeah, great score, it was McNamee, Aidan O'Shea just left him go, got enough space and put it in, a great score by Hamsey. Great start to the match. Ryan O'Donoghue. The man with the pink boots here is Oshin Mullen. Called in, playing centre-half back. Ruan again. Joining the attack is Lee Keegan. The man who scored seven championship goals and five of them here at Croke Park. Brian Walsh. Back as far as Connor Loftus, getting his hand on the ball. Trying to get away there from Connor McKenna who dug in and the referee didn't like the nature of the challenge the Tyrone fans jeering that but it's got to be a free kick for Mayo harsh enough I thought the one thing for Mayo do not bring ball into contact Tyrone is exactly what they need and want you to do if you can move it around get it into space the quicker it goes the better Donahue getting it forward here as far as Kevin McLaughlin used his body well there against Hart intercepting there was Frank Burns did well took it back Helped out here by Michael McKernan. Flicked inside. Michael O'Neill, where is 11, but will play in a very deep position for much of the game. And even as I say it now, he tries to burst forward. Back helping out is Connor McKenna, still inside his own 65. McGeary likewise. All the way over to Connor Myler. Picking it up here is Niall Sladden. Two players inside the Mayo 45. Holding on to it is Myler again, ready to take it forward this time. Looking to see where the inside player was, and that is McCurry. McCurry goes down, the challenge came in from Brian Walsh, and the referee points in the general direction of the Mayo goal. 3-2 to Tyrone. Brilliant by Tyrone, Joe. That's how you actually counter-attack with numbers. They moved it over to the far side of the pitch. I counted 10 Mayo fellas in small, close vicinity, tackling very, very hard. They moved it across, moved it quickly once they got it inside, and Mayo fouled, and another great chance for Tyrone. They're sticking with them. All action opening, 10 minutes. Chance now for McCurry to put Tyrone in front for the first time in the game. Having conceded the opening two points to Tommy Conroy and to Orion O'Donoghue free. 
angle tricky for a left footer but not for Darren McCurry and that will do his confidence a pile of good the fans are happy Tyrone lead 3-2 their handling is outstanding Ger. Tyrone kick passing short kick passing hand passing movement it's outstanding very well drilled team management duo of course still in their first campaign that's come bouncing back once again into the hands of Niall Snodden surrounded by Mayo players but Aidan O'Shea thought they were being disciplined referee thought otherwise carried on here by Conor Myler Hart is involved so too is Matty Donnelly McCurry once again thought about it then back to the safe hands of Myler once more no hurry Kilpatrick calling for the ball on this near side is Kieran McGeary doesn't get to him not immediately anyway it reaches Paddy Hamsey now McGeary takes it up chance to look up now the Tyrone players all of them inside the Mayo half of the field only one Mayo player back down towards the other end that is Ryan O'Donoghue so they're defending en masse goalkeeper has come out to join the attack as well Niall Morgan setting it up for Paddy Hampsey. Conroy about to come across to tag him. Here's McGeary. Out there is Lee Keegan to try and steal it from him. McGeary again. Absolutely no hurry whatsoever, leading the match by three points to two. As you can see, 12 minutes in. Frank Burns. Now, how will this end? It's Hamsey, tracked by a couple of Mayo defenders, no way through immediately. Back to Burns again, throws the shoulder. After him goes Conroy, kicking it across the face of goal, but there's nobody in there to collect it. And instead, it's going to be Paddy Durkin who will take it downfield. The challenge has been presented early on, but he dodges past Connor McKenna, takes off, supported here by Oshin Mullen. Mullen going forward again, and then it's pinched away brilliantly. And the man who pinched it away was Brian Kennedy, but Mayo still going forward. Throw the shoulders by Loftus this time, kicking under pressure. Big, huge one in, and the ball has gone the wrong side of the upright. And it's a second wide by Mayo. That was a great chance for Mayo to actually tag on a score. A brilliant run by Durkin out of the fence. Burns was trying the outside of the boot. He gave it away. Are Mayo standing off Tyrone a little bit at the back, just like they did against Dublin in the first half, Chair? I'm not too sure. They're not up there. Maybe are they conscious of, of leaking a big score? They're getting bodies back. But Tyrone, if they can actually make hay with those chances when they're up, up front and take a chance. But what a counter-attack by Mayo. Now Morgan once again. He's well out of his goal right now. Chased by a couple of Mayo players. Myler decides to take off now. Has a support player to his right-hand side, another to his left. Very ably holding this one. Different type of game he's playing today. That ball threaded in there, hoping for the best. Hart was up after it quickly. And now it's back with Rob Henley. Great defending by Cohen. Up man on man on Donnelly. It's man on man everywhere, Jarrett. It's absolutely brilliant to watch. Sure is. Brian Walsh. Ready to go forward. Change of direction. Matthew Ruan. Taking it forward strongly. Kennedy trying to keep up with him. And then it was the turn of Michael O'Neill to get in a challenge. Helped out over there by Dermot O'Connor. Reaches Stephen Cohen. Walsh again now. Played through nicely. Change of direction by Ryan O'Donoghue, then dodged away from McKernan. Beautifully inside here is a goal chance for Walsh. Walsh off the goalkeeper, and then it was Loftus's turn, and somehow they failed to put it in past the goalkeeper and in over the goal line. There were so many Tyrone bodies back there, including Niall Slodden. That was an absolutely brilliant chance. Brian Walsh was inside. Goal, he got out quickly. It was a huge difference to him, but a brilliant chance. What a hand pass in to find Walsh, but should he have gone on and kicked on the left I'm not too sure but the goalie was out quick they can thank Morgan for that well, one thing Jar is Aidan O'Shea hasn't been in the game at all not one once have I seen him on the, on, the, on the ball from play so that's a big thing but that was a great chance for Mayo two goal opportunities presented none availed of and now there's a, a need for some attention for one of the Tyrone defenders all action nearly 15 minutes are gone five points so far 
for a camp seat from Cole Island. Picking himself up and being treated there. The fans have been treated to an exciting opening to the game. Brian Dewar has been here three times to win All-Ireland medals and twice as captain. It'll be Nal Morgan who will kick this one out. Looking for Con Kilpatrick. He slipped. No free, no foul committed there by Rouen. Back into Aidan O'Shea, the uh, player that Tomas O'Shea was talking about just a moment ago here. First time to kick that ball in as far as Kevin McLaughlin. Both of them have soldiered in the Mayo colours long, long numbers of years. Loftus playing it back. Dermot O'Connor now picked up again by Connor Loftus. Oshin Mullen. Both sides being patient in their attack. Nothing too hurried. Trying to make the very most of every opportunity they create. McLaughlin. Has Dermot O'Connor. They're ready to take it from him. Big performance needed from O'Connor. Ryan O'Donoghue who's already scored from a free. Ready to take on McLaughlin. McKernan kicking and clipping it over the bar. Did well to get away from Michael McKernan and put over his second point of the match. Ryan O'Donoghue making it three points apiece and the teams are level for the second time. Great score, absolutely brilliant. If you take on those men and run at them, Tyrone do not like it when you run directly at them. Aidan O'Shea hugged the far side, far side line, created space, but Ryan O'Donoghue did absolutely brilliant. From the resultant kick out, it's one against two in there, but still Tyrone emerge with possession. And as Conor McKenna being a peach of a ball as far as Darren McCurry, beautifully angled, nicely over. He's got a second. 4 3, Tyrone leading. It's a brilliant game, Ger. What an answer. Straight up the pitch, McCurry over the bar. Tyrone are actually doing quite well on the long kickouts. They're winning breaking ball out there. It's an area that Mayo will have to improve. But a direct ball from Tyrone straight into McCurry over the bar. Brilliant. Let's hope it can continue. We've gone to the South Siska, the first of those. Let's go down and join Damien Lawler. Damien. Thank you, Ger. Just watching both managers here, uh, Eamon Fisaurus is beside me, and James Horn and Brian Doher look like they're meditating, Eamon, but gradually you sense they might combust as the game goes on. Yeah, they're both very calm and collected at the moment, um, Damien. Look, it's a fantastic up and down the pitch contest, all action. There's great football being played. There's mistakes being made at both sides. Very even, as we said before the game, that we felt it would be. I think the midfield battle between Brian Kennedy and Matthew Ruan is very interesting. Both are playing well. We see the goal chance. It was a fantastic goal chance for Mayo. Um, Connor Loftus missed it. It would almost remind you of the Paul Ganey, Steve O'Brien Brian won in the first half of the semi-final with Kerry as well. Tyrone survived that one and went on to win. So we'll see if that will be huge today. Goals are obviously huge in this contest, and that was definitely a chance missed for Mayo. But very even, very great battle, enjoyable contest, and hopefully that keeps going. Thanks, Eamon. Back to you, Ger. Thank you, Damien. Well, it's the first championship meeting of these two teams for five years. They haven't met all that many times in the championship. That time it was the uh, quarterfinals in 2016. Mayo getting the uh, better of things by 13 points to 12. There's been very little between these sides usually. And as you can see, a point the difference at this early stage. So after the water break, it's going to be Rob Henley will kick it back into action again. And the clock ticks on going short as far as Lee Keegan this time able to carry it down playing in his 63rd ever championship match beautifully down as far as Aidan O'Shea looking to get going now up against Ronan McNamee the Mayo captain laying it off as far as Tommy Conroy Conroy getting an advantage kicking it in the advantage will be uh, given to him and they'll be bringing it back it was wide but it's going to be a free in for Mayo chance for them to level the game once again yeah Mayo's plan is to run it uh, and get the ball up the field as quick as you can great to see Aidan O'Shea getting on the ball I think he's key for Mayo if they are to win Ryan O'Donoghue is flying it if you can actually move it through the lines as quick as you can and run at Tyrone I think they have them in trouble Ryan O'Donoghue has got two goals and 21 points already in this year's championship including two points today again the Angle is not always to his liking, but he's made the most. That's his third point of the game, and the sides are level for the third time. She's happy. They're all happy, I think. Lots to uh, choose from in the opening 
18 and a half minutes of this game to please everybody, I think. It's interesting, Gerard. Tyrone are pushing up on the Mayo kick out. Are they leaving too much space at the back? Mayo seem to get that ball out and down the field and ready for a score. Will they change tack and get more bodies back? Well capable of making adjustments as the game develops as Roland McNamee now, 10 years playing at this level, plays it forward to Peter Hart, who made his debut against Mayo back in uh, 2012 and scored in that game as well. The league match in Oma. Frank Burns, Foyk, Foyk Hampsey now, leaving it off as far as Kieran McGeary. Burns once more. Goalkeeper again involved. You were here on the day of the Ulster final when both goalkeepers were out the field more often than they were in between the goals. Yeah, Here's was... Brian Kennedy. That's McCurry now picking it up. Dish back as far as Kieran McGeary. Will it curl in? The umpires go back behind the goal. See that it's perfect. And Kieran McGeary has got a championship All-Ireland final point here. And he puts Tyrone back in front, 5-4. Huge kick out, all the way down it comes as far as Brian Walsh this time. Walsh only playing in his fifth championship game, fouled. Hits it in now smartly, in there towards Tommy Conroy, holding off Hampsey. Conroy looking for reinforcements, back towards Walsh again. Stephen Cohen. Now the Tyrone player is able to get back, so a puzzle for Mayo to try and work out for themselves. It's McLaughlin. In as far as Aidan O'Shea looking to kick over the cover and Aidan O'Shea has kicked it wide. Wide number three. It's his seventh All-Ireland final match. He's never scored in a final. Yeah, it's a brilliant game to watch, Ger, up and down the pitch. Mayo with another brilliant chance there. McGeary with a huge score, beating the blanket with a long-range point. That's Tyrone are playing well. That's cut out there by Lee Keegan. Mopped up quickly here by Paddy Durkin. Smartly on as far as Aidan O'Shea, crisply to Lee Keegan, all the names we associate with uh, Mayo over the years. He was about to pull the, the trigger there with his left foot. Connor Myler was ready to pinch it from him. It comes back over to Ryan O'Donoghue. O'Donoghue gets away past Myler. Then there are two other defenders confronting him, so wisely plays it across as far as Oshin Mullen, looking for space. Durkin trying to collect here. Has a quick look up at the target, kicks instinctively and kicks it over the bar and Paddy Durkin in his 42nd championship match has made it five points apiece great great score Jared Lee Keegan carrying ball in didn't lose it which was key into three bodies came around and Mayo are brilliant at it work it over to the other side player in space over the bar absolutely outstanding you can understand now after uh, 22 nearly 22 minutes gone why so many people could not make up their minds who's going to win this one. Yeah, it's a cracker of a game. They're both going for it. They're both pushing up. They're both being brave. They're working it around. They have their homework done. They're, they're taking their time when they need to. They're rushing it when they have to. It's been a brilliant match to watch so far. Niall Morgan out past his own 45-metre line, making sure there's nobody dodging in behind him. Now as far as Frank Burns... A little bit of movement here by Niall Sludden running into the challenges. It bounced kindly, and there was support there from Ronan McNamee for going his full back position, then losing it. But he was fouled, much to the annoyance of Porik O'Hora and many, many thousands of Mayo fans here. Yeah, I can understand their frustration, but when a player is bending down like that, Jerry, you're always told, don't tackle him. The ref will always give it to them. I suppose he did follow through on him. He should have just waited him and got on the other side and kept him on the outside. So the ref was always going to give that. It'll be uh, Darren McCurry then to try and get his third point of the match. Michael McKernan received a little bit of attention off the field, but uh, he's OK. McCurry, two from two so far. Has this one gone a little, drop a little bit short? It is. And there was a player inside of the square, and of course that is still a square ball from a set piece, like a free, like a 45, like a sideline ball. Something the players need to be aware of. That rule hadn't changed. Aidan O'Shea now coming forward, giving it to Machuruan. 
storming once again down past Brian Kennedy who tries to keep tabs on him and the ball is spilled loose and uh, Frank Burns is quite happy to let it run out over the sideline. Looking for a big impact from Machu Ruan and Conor Loftus and Aidan O'Shea in the middle of the field for Mayo in this game. That last free jar, McCurry, a left leg, that wasn't a left legged, legged kicker. That was that was too far out for him. He was actually going for a point, a wasted opportunity. You need somebody with a right peg over on that side to take those frees. Ball wasn't taken from the correct position, so it's got to be a hop ball. Joe McCullen from the Kill Shamrocks Club in Cavan, throwing it in, and Aidan O'Shea gleefully taking it, but then surrounded immediately, had to release it. Then uh, he's gone down, play continues, the referee then blows it up. Be interesting to see the challenge on Aidan O'Shea again in just a moment. Yeah, I think I saw it, I think he just, they were grappling afterwards, they both fell, and I think accidentally, and I think it was an accident, the foot came down and made contact with, with the head, I think, when Aidan O'Shea was on the ground, if I saw it properly. Well, there was a push from behind there by Brian Kennedy. Yeah, the ref had turned his back completely at this stage. Then he fell yeah, over him and the, the boot just made contact yeah. accidentally. His knee just connected with the head, but I don't think that was... I think that was completely accidental, yeah. Well, the free kick is being given to Tyrone for the earlier foul, I think. Holding on too long, and... Uh, Tyrone gleefully take it anyway. As far as Niall Sludden. Connor Myler now. Up against him is Paddy Durkin. Myler who did a wonderful job in the semi-final here two weeks ago against Kerry. Following Paddy Clifford all over the place that afternoon. Here's Michael McKernan. Showing his pace now, getting forward. A couple of players inside there, one of them was Connor McKenna on the ground as that ball was kicked in and the ball kicked wide anyway off the boot of Kieran McGeary that's a second wide by Tyrone in this match hotting up as you anticipated it would Stephen Cohen kicked nicely down as far as Ryan O'Donoghue smartly inside to Aidan O'Shea can he score here well blocked down by Ronan McNamee Brilliant block by McNamee, good covering. Morgan comes forward. That was an unbelievable ball by Ryan O'Donoghue. You could see Aidan O'Shea's hand, Aidan O'Shea's hand going up in the air. He shouldn't have gone for it. It was a great block, but he shouldn't have gone for it. He should have let him bought the dummy. Michael O'Neill, Peter Hart. Back once again, it comes this time to Conor McKenna. High up into the air, going left, and a missed opportunity. And that is another one that's got astray. Wide number three for Tyrone. And yeah, of course, McKenna has been quiet, Jerry. McKenna has been very quiet. The long ball, you can just see there what it can do when it goes in at the right angle. Tyrone pressing forward again here. It's a Tyrone team, of course, with Carl McShane, Derek Canavan on the bench as it's kicked by Niall Sludden. On the outside of the boot is a difficult technique. It's masterfully done by Sludden. His first point here, and Tyrone are back. In front again by six points to five. That's brilliant. Sludden, Nigiri, Hamsey outside of the boot. It's absolutely outstanding to watch. Dermot O'Connor down as far as Lee Keegan. Machu Ruan. Retained here somehow by Michael Plunkett. Back to Ruan again, immediately surrounded by three or four Tyrone players. Their work rate is absolutely immense. I mean, it's still very reminiscent of uh, the kind of Tyrone performance back quite a long while ago when you were playing, 2003. Swarm defence, but so productive, so exciting to watch now when they go forward. And they move quickly, and it's McCurry again. Little fumble there, and that allowed O'Hora to get in, and then supported here by Stephen Cohen and into the safe hands of Tommy Conroy, notionally the number 14 and full forward. Brian Walsh now. The work rate on both sides, Ger, is phenomenal to watch. Con Kilpatrick made a 60-yard run to create space there. It's brilliant. Keegan, down to O'Shea again, lets it bounce. 
after him goes Ronan McNamee. Paddy Durkin picking it up. We're in the 29th minute. Here's Keegan. Plenty of space in front of him. And he's got O'Donoghue there for company against Michael McKernan. Trying to deceive. Oh, it's a little over hit. And that one should be for Hampsies and is helped out by Connor Myler. Brian Kennedy now fisting it forward. There's potential in this attack. Frank Burns all the way over towards Matty Donnelly. Hasn't been on the ball too often. Up against Stephen Cohen. Donnelly making an angle for himself and up and over. Brilliantly done by Matty Donnelly. He was patient in the extreme there. He knew exactly what he had to do and he did it quite superbly. And he's put two between them. Counter-attacking at its best. Ryan O'Donoghue gave a ball across, lost it. Tyrone up the field and punished it. That's what Mayo can't afford to do. An absolutely brilliant point by Tyrone. It's a Tyrone team in their seventh All-Ireland final. A Mayo team in their 18th. Both sides with three All-Ireland victories. Morgan kicking a huge one down. McCurry. Can he finish? No, goalkeeper comes out and deflects it behind. A missed opportunity. It's gone for a 45, thanks to the excellence of Rob Henley. Oh, what a chance, Ger. What a ball by Morgan. What a turnover. Mayo coughing up these chances. But that was an apps. Should he have picked it up earlier? Oh, my God, what a save. That's a brilliant chance for Tyrone. Both sides have missed two good chances. But what a ball from, from Morgan into them. The long ball will do damage. Ger, there's space in there. But that's definitely a chance missed by Tyrone. People often ask to most how the game has changed for Tyrone this year under the new managers, Fergal Logan and Brian Dewar. That's an example of it. That long, penetrating ball, which they weren't doing in the last couple of years. They would have always have ran it. Yeah. they wouldn't have the bodies up there was two bodies stayed inside there but I think they might have been up there before but they wouldn't have kicked it Morgan took a great chance there what a chance of a point here as well Morgan with one point already and that one is steered off the post and up and over the bar a second one this time from the 45 by Niall Morgan of Eden Dork, their 30-year-old goalkeeper who's put these Tyrone fans into rupture, rupture rather with about four minutes to go to half time leading by eight points to five yeah, Jar, you don't want Tyrone getting that three, four points ahead of you. The last ten minutes, they've kicked on. They're defending very, very well. Mayo have copped up possession a good few times. And key to all that is Tyrone have punished them. They're going great. Connor Loftus for a Mayo team that fell behind against Galway in the Connor final here. Fell behind as well, of course, against Dublin in the All-Ireland semi-final. It's ten minutes now since Mayo got a score. Kevin McLaughlin playing it in here towards Aidan O'Shea. And O'Shea fouled, chance for them to get one back. Yeah, I spoke about Aidan O'Shea earlier. He's come into the game very much so. He's key to Mayo, as I said. He's winning ball. That's all you need to do, because if you can take him on, then he will draw fouls. McNamee doesn't have the same strength as he does, so it's key that Mayo get it into him, into Ryan O'Donoghue as quick as they can. I think we should say that Aidan O'Shea has been hampered by a foot injury for quite some time now. And... Uh, they're glad that he's fit enough to be able to start in this final. That's a beauty again. Ryan O'Donoghue's got four. He's kicking very well. Killian O'Connor has been a huge loss to Mayo. How he'd love to be out there today, but he's filled his boots today so far, Ger. Only two points the margin. Nal Morgan goes long, very, very long, all the way down towards Conor McKenna. Couldn't hold on to it. Great defensive work this time. Keegan in the thick of it. Fouled. Free kick quickly taken by Oshin Mullen. There's great pace to the game. Brilliant stuff. Connor Loftus. Here's Kevin McLaughlin. Man from Knockmore. Won the county title in Mayo last year for the first time in some 23 years. Keegan. Change of direction. Mullen's ready to go forward. Last year's young footballer of the year. Stephen Cohen. Urged on by the Mayo fans near us here. Ryan O'Donoghue back in there. Wasn't the best pass. Too many Tyrone players there. And the wily Peter Hart able to pick it up and give it to Frank Burns. Steady and assured. There's a consistency to this Tyrone performance. Porik Hamsey. 
back out as far as Sladen again. He had a quick look up to see where the movement was inside by McCurry, and he's moving, causing problems for Porik Ahora, and Ahora commits the foul, drags him down. Free kick, could be in trouble. That's a pull to the ground, Jared. That is a black card, technically. Will he give it? But the counter attack, and we spoke about Mayo coughing up another loose pass, a turnover, and the movement by McCurry. He went one way, he went the other. He turned O'Hora inside out, came on. To me, if you're talking about a black card, he was going to foul him. He pulled him down, possibly a black card for me there, yes. But another great chance for Tyrone. They're absolutely, the last 15 minutes, they've really turned the screw on Mayo. They've pressured him up the field. They've got turnovers. And uh, as I said already, the key thing is they're getting scores on the other side. And Darren McCurry leaves little margin for error just inside the left hand upright, but a third point for him. Now he got four against Kerry in the last game. So 9 6. Mullen, Lee Keegan, Mayo looking for a good finish to the half. Teams were level, I think, on some uh, three or four occasions. Cohen. Maturuan hasn't been the major influence in the game so far. Likewise, Jeremy O'Connor. I think Mayo are going to be needing an awful lot more from those players and Aidan O'Shea as well. Ruan. They've been here before, Jared. They've put in poor performances against Galway in the first half. They put in poor performances against Dublin in the first half. They haven't been absolutely poor today. I think they've been very, very good in areas, but the last 10 minutes they won't be happy with, and they'll have to address that at halftime. Well, the deficit is not going to be as great as it was in the last two matches, that's for certain. And Tommy Conroy hoping that it'll be just two if they can get the next score. Stephen Cohen. Aidan O'Shea is roaring for it inside. Been marked inside there by Roland McNamee. Going short to Ryan O'Donoghue. Part after him. No way through immediately. So back it comes as far as Jeremy O'Connor. But he's still 45 metres out. To the number of Tyrone backs there, pestering, making it impossible. In his face. It's Connor Loftus now in possession. That's fierce defending by Tyrone. It's Tyrone at their best. They're so organised at it. Cohen in here as far as Aidan O'Shea. Trying to get away there from McNamee. Then comes Ruan, O'Shea again, patient, back to Loftus, no way past Michael O'Neill. Stephen Cohen, who scored in the final last year, looking to try and do that again, and he's done it. It's a very good point by Stephen Cohen. I don't understand why teams don't do it often enough. Tyrone did it up this side. Take a shot from long range if you have it. Great kick by Stephen Cohen. But if you have, Tyrone were so tired, they dropped off him for a second. He took the opportunity. Yes, you, it's a chance that's risky enough. But if you have good kickers, go for it, Jaron. A great score. Four of the seven points for Mayo so far coming from Ryan O'Donoghue. Tommy Conroy, the only other forward to score from play for Mayo. This is Niall Morgan country again. You can't be fouling in this area. He's well, gone they take quick. it quickly through Peter Hart. Change of plan. Niall Sludden, he fancies it. Can he measure it? It's a beauty. He's really hot. He's got a second point in this final in the opening half. Good distance out. Absolute precision. 10-7. They're sharp, they're moving it quick, they're concentrated, they're all alert to what's actually happening. Great score, everybody, Mayo possibly thought Morgan was going to come up the field. Took their eyes off the ball, Tyrone didn't, over the bar. Held on to here by Tommy Conroy. They don't want to leave Crow Park empty-handed once again. They've done it far too many times. Back out towards Machu Ruan. Can they get the next score? Is it possible? Ohora! Oh, well, that was a foul there. Kieran McGeary reached in. If that's a foul, the big question is, was it inside the line or was it outside the line? Great hands off by Aidan O'Shea. Just outside, it appears. It was a brilliant pass to Ohora from O'Shea, but was he fouled? The hand went around the neck. Just outside. Just outside of my call. That's it was Kieran McGeary. 
It was McGeary who reached in, caught him. An important decision here now for the referee to make. Not sure how they'd know inside. He probably had the best view of all. This will be the best view. Outside. Yeah, it's got to be a, an ordinary free kick. Ordinary as you can make it in an All-Ireland final from 13 metres. Aidan O'Shea having a little chat. McGeary having his top and safety worth as well. When do you hurt Tyrone most, Jerry? You hurt them when you actually come at them at pace in those situations. It was a great win by Aidan O'Shea. You handed it off and you ran. Tyrone, they have to foul you. They either leave you through or they foul you. They fouled you there, and so that, that's what Mayo need to get more of if they can. Ahora picks himself off the ground, looks the worst for wear, a man who has featured in the RTE series, the ultimate hell week uh, some years back. <laughs> he did well that week, didn't he? <laughs> He's a tough man. A tough nut. So this is going to be Ryder O'Donoghue, probably the last kick of the first half. This to make it a two-point game. He's got five. Ten points to eight. They might have coughed up a lot of possession, Jar, but Mayo are that so well in it in this game. Only two points down. They won't be happy with a lot of it. So a brilliant game of football in the, sec in the first half and a lot to look forward to. It sure has. An enthralling opening 35 minutes. Little to choose between the teams. I think Tyrone will be a little bit happier. Now at Croke Park to the sanctuary of their dressing rooms on All-Ireland football final Saturday. The half-time score here at Croke Park shows two points between them. It is Mayo eight points. It's Tyrone ten. We're back in just a moment with analysis and Joanne at her panel. Knows exactly Joanne. Referee ready to start. Paddy Durkin and Mayo looking to exorcise the ghosts of all those recent defeats in all ireland finals losing five all irelands in the last decade including three one-point defeats to six in a row dublin that one change ender hefshin has come on in place of michael plunkett ender's gone into the half back line and it is Oshin mullen who's gone back into the full back line probably on a marking job second half gets underway and aiden o'shea makes certain that he gets his hands on the ball immediately fouled as he was doing so so quickly taking the free kick his team two points down that screws away off his boot was hit somewhat indiscriminately Frank Burns calling for it here and getting it is Peter Hart Kieran McGeary and Tyrone's turn now to just take possession and work their way forward with Burns once again involved Here's Niall Slodden, kicked two very memorable points in the first half. Looking to go down that flank over there, stopped by Connor Loftus, so change of direction. A lot of hurrying and hassling now by Mayo just to try and stymie Tyrone, but it's Brian Kennedy who was yellow carded very early on in the match, making the inroads. Connor Myler now looking to play this ball in so expertly to Michael O'Neill. Back it comes once again towards. Peter Hart, eventually kicked there by Conor McKenna, and uh, to the left, and a missed opportunity. As was said earlier on in the semi-final as well, Tomas, Conor McKenna didn't do an awful lot for 95% of the game, but he finished with two goals. Two goals, yeah, Jar, he'd be huge for, for Tyrone, hopefully, in the second half, if he can get going. He hasn't been great so far. Mayo have been a team that have come out in the second half and done very, very well. That'll be the challenge for Tyrone in this second half. Can they actually stay with them, slow the game down, and not allow Mayo get a hand on it? Kevin McLaughlin, much more needed from him. Booted inside towards Aidan O'Shea, trying to get it, can't hold on to it. Instead, it was Conor Myler who came, made the most of it was intent on winning that one a fumble by O'Shea and the end result a free kick to Tyrone yeah straight away when he went in Myler had turned and he was gone in for it dived bravely on top of it they are the small little things that will win you the big games those breaking balls going in where fellas wouldn't put their heads or their feet and it's a it's a good win for them and um, Tyrone will be delighted that it isn't going to be a huge start for Mayo they're going to want to work it slowly, tag on a score or two, and that's then when Mayo will need to have an answer. They're going to need something big in the second half. They're going to carry Sam home. 
Fergal Logan there, the manager in the background. He was telling us during the uh, week about a near neighbour of his called Tori Carolyn, who hasn't been terribly well. And he's a Mayo man living in East Tyrone, wished well by everybody. Frank Burns ready to take this. Limping away from it is Con Kilpatrick. Michael Kernan now, change of direction, helped out by Burns. Back in 2018, he was uh, playing in the All-Ireland Final, McCurdan, in his first year. Donnelly leaving it. McKenna coming on to it, and the pass is away, word one, and Mayo were able to mop it up at the back, and Cohen able to get it away out of danger. Nicely forward as far as Brian Walsh. Room now in front of him. Kicked ahead. Nicely retained by Tommy Conroy. This is a man who can do damage. He's intent on doing so and he's put it to the left and he's missed and it stays at 10 points to eight that was another brilliant chance take him on again going straight down oh that was a poor effort a poor effort from tommy conroy that came from a turnover down the other side from conor mckenna a loose hand pass the good thing for tyrone is they have mcshane they have canavan they'll be bringing them in after 10 15 minutes here both sides with four wides conor myler Taking it around, Conor Loftus with some ease. Looks composed, very focused, into Darren McCurry. And McCurry's shot drops short. Rob Henley. He's had a couple of good and bad moments in All-Ireland Finals down there in Croke Park over the years. This is third All-Ireland Final match. Mathieu Rouad. Pursued by the other number eight, Brian Kennedy. Dermot O'Connor has McLaughlin here to forage, leaving it here instead for Paddy Durkin to start running at the Tyrone defence. What they do well, and when they do so, it can be very productive. It's still Durkin, needing support, getting it from Ryan O'Donoghue, and down goes Ryan O'Donoghue, taken down, and an apologetic Frank Burns goes straight to the referee, Joe McQuillan, from Cavan. Ryan O'Donoghue is running at them all day, he's getting fouled all day. It's slow enough getting the ball in. Frank Burns is actually sitting as a sweeper in front of the two. Probably Aidan O'Shea, the fact that he's inside there. He's sitting back. It's a yellow card for them. But any time Mayo run, Tommy Conroy ran. He got a goal chance. Don't know who ran at them. It's a foul. Get the ball in and run at them. That's a second yellow card for a Tyrone player. It gives Ryan O'Donoghue now this opportunity, following the goal missed by Tommy Conroy a few minutes ago, to get the first score of the second half. He kicked five points in the first half. Difficult for a right-footed kicker. Yeah, you can see it there. And that ball's on the goal line and fisted away eventually out of trouble. Just how Waiting did he... for a referee's whistle to sound. How did he pick that up? His feet were three foot away. It, Was that it's a penalty yeah. for a pickup. Yeah. A foul inside in the small square. Let's watch it again Frank here. It Burns. was Frank Burns once more. Yeah, Burns straight off, it off the, the ground. ground. What? This is some chance for Mayo. That was a poor mistake. He shouldn't have. He should have tried to lie on it, even if he lied on it, sure. But to touch it with your ground, he was, or with your hands, you're always going to get caught at that. And a right call by the referee, Epeno. What a few shocking moments for Frank Burns. Yellow carded, then conceding the penalty. Ryan O'Donoghue scored from a penalty kick down there against Galway in the Connacht final this year here in Croke Park. He hit it to the right as we look at it. Will he do something similar against Niall Morgan? This in the 42nd minute of the All-Ireland Football Final. Oh! It's gone wide. What a miss. What a shocking miss. Can't believe it. Stays at 10 oh, points to 8. Hit Might the have post. hit the post. Oh, my God. When he slowed down with that little shimmy and... and Morgan jumped, I said, yeah, he's going to get this. Hit the post, that's an awful miss for Mayo. Is it to be another day of misfortune for Mayo? Will Tyrone profit and play this great football we know they're capable of? Matty Donnelly taken down and list. Lost possession, that's no a... appeal for a free. Mayo come out with it again here. Fisted out, Durkin out there as far as Oshin Mullen moving forward before they go Hora. Then waiting to take it forward as Lee Keegan before he was dragged down by Darren McCurry. All happening in the last couple of minutes. 
absolutely brilliant from Patrick O'Hora. The counter-attack was on. Donnelly was absolutely hammering for the goal. Looked like a certain score. Patrick O'Hora got a great hand in, turned it over straight back down the field. This is it now, Ger for Mayo. After missing a penalty, it tends to suck the life out of you. The other team gets confidence, but that was a key tackle there by O'Hora. They're not Mayo, you'd never ever say that they're gone. Yes, the penalty is a knock and a blow to them, but it's early in the half. They have plenty of time to get back into this. This is going to be some second half. It just shaved the upright. Niall Morgan didn't get near it, but it was missed by Orion O'Donoghue and a horrible miss. Now he's got to put it out of his head pretty quickly. There's a lot of this game still to be played. We're only some eight minutes into the second half, and Cahill McShane is ready to come on. To be what fair, a sub to, to be able to bring in. A uh, huge. Keegan's okay. To be fair to Ryan O'Donoghue, yes, missed the penalty, but he's been one. He's been probably Mayo's best player today in terms of confidence and taking players on all day long in terms of the freeze he's kicked. So I don't think this will knock him off kilter too much. McShane is a huge one. Don Lee gone. I thought McKenna might have gone, but McShane is in. He'll be massive. There were one or two other names going through my head that might have come off, but uh, not Maddie Donnelly, I have to say. And that's what happened there just a moment ago. End result is a free kick, which Rob Henley is going to take. Two points, Jar. It's nothing, really, when you think about it. Absolutely not, considering we're only nine minutes into the second half. Anybody's match still. Henley up into the air and brilliantly over the crossbar as well. After the penalty miss, that's going to lift Mayo spirits, Mayo hearts. They'll believe they're still in there. Both teams can win this. It's anybody's All-Ireland final. Unbelievable. Brilliant. O'Hora, that was O'Hora's tackle that got back up the field for that free and a brilliant kick. All the way down, brilliantly taken by Brian Kennedy. Slipped outside quickly to McCurry. Onto it comes Sladden. Tyrone looking for the next score. Sladden up into the air. Has he got it? No, he hasn't. Wrong side. Missed opportunity, wide De number five. Definitely a missed chance there. The pace that they got up the field, Mayo as good and all as they are at the back, had no answer to it, but that's a bad miss by Tyrone. Well, the scoring rate has certainly slowed down. Only one point to show for the opening ten minutes of the second half. And this is Ender Hessian now. First time he's got his hands on the ball. Connor Loftus has been busy. Stephen Cohen's already scored. Ryan O'Donoghue giving it back here to Loftus. Loftus inside the D, slipping and sliding. Down he goes, immediately surrounded by Tyrone players. Holds on too long. Correct decision. Referee gives the free kick to Tyrone. He yeah, just he ran it. into a trap that time. There was nothing he could do about it. Nothing, no. They got, in, they got one hand on him. They got two fellas in as quick as they could. But if you can get those trunk runners, Mayo put a ball in and have somebody running, there's going to chance is going to, going to pop up. Myler. Down along here as far as McCurry, looking to lay it off, then holding on to it himself. Nobody was coming immediately to him. Kennedy, back here as far as Boric Hamsey. Hamsey, looking to his left-hand side where myler has gone. Gives it out to him. Diagonally in here, it's a probing ball. It's a goal! And it's Carl McShane! It's another one for Carl McShane! It's his fifth ever championship goal coming after 46 minutes. What a turnaround. 110 to 9. Absolutely unbelievable. What a goal. Mayo are on the counter-attack again, but that is absolutely huge for Tyrone. Mayo have got to go and climb up that mountain once again. An all too familiar hill for them in Croke Park All-Ireland Finals over the years. Paddy Durkin. The gap out to four points. Durkin caught in two minds, holds on way too long again. Again, credit the absolute brilliance of that Tyrone cover. Oh, it's been absolutely all day long, Jared. They have been fantastic since the word go. McShane had made three or four runs before that, put the hand up. I, I think it was Hampsey that saw him, popped it into him. Absolutely great finish. Henley possibly came a little bit too late, should have either stayed or come earlier. But I tell you what, it's going to be tough enough to trump throne after this. Frank Burns, they're in the ascendancy right now. Leading nicely, 12 minutes into the second half. Sean Cavanaugh was saying beforehand, maybe this 31 counties against us, that is Tyrone. 
Tyrone don't care. Sentiment doesn't win anything in All-Ireland Finals. you got to go out there and you got to do it. And once again, Mayo are in trouble. Under pressure once again. Nicely in here, retained well by Conor McKenna. A kicking opportunity for him, about 40 metres out. The man who came back from Essendon in the AFL and a chance to make it a five-pointer. Looking to get it up and looking to get it over. He has missed. Ah, that's, that's poor, Jared. That was a great chance to actually nail another into the coffin. But uh, when you look back at it, the missed penalty, four or five minutes later, a goal up the other end. It's the swing of four points there straight away. Even in the second half so far, Tomos, Tommy Conroy had a great goal chance. Ryan O'Donoghue, that penalty you're talking about. And yet, look at the score. It's 110 to nine points. And Matty Ruan and Mayo now having to start from deep inside their own half. Lee Keegan spills out as far as Dermot O'Connor. Needs to get going. Delivers the pass inside, but it's anticipated by Ronan McNamee. There was an arm in there caught, and it's got to be a free in. Shake of the head by the Tyrone captain, Fawdy Hampsey. I'll go back to the McKenna mark. If you were putting them over, you're going five ahead, six ahead, seven ahead. Small little scores like that. Instead of that, they're down the field and they have another one up in the score and then you're back to three. Mayo will never, you'll never write Mayo off. It's going to be an uphill battle for them. It's going to be a tough battle for them. Yes, they can come back into it, but Toronto need to be cute and need to be clever. Still go for the scores, but be patient and slow Mayo down. Frustrate them. This will put one score between the teams. Ryan O'Donoghue in the D. Lots and lots of jeering, unwelcome jeering into his ears, but he cast that aside and gets his opening point of the second half. His sixth in all, and now it's 110 to 10 points. Another minute or two or three maybe to go before we get to the water break. Tyrone goes short as far as Ronan McNamee. He has done a really good job in this match so far, McNamee. The linchpin of this Tyrone defence. Frank Burns breathing a sigh of relief, I think. The missed penalty that he was responsible for and the free before that where he got a yellow card Michael McCurden now easing his way forward here nice pace good coordination and then across came the challenge of Lee Keegan and that's got to be penalised as well pretty cynical great bust off the, up the field from McCurden and Lee Keegan came across and it was a certain foul was it cynical? You could argue, probably won't be a, a black card or anything like that, a yellow card. Keegan looking plaintively at uh, the match referee, Joe McQuillan, gets a yellow card. Well, he's probably weighing it up and saying, well, it was uh, a foul I had to, to give, because otherwise we were going to be in further trouble. You have to admire McShane just on the pitch, a goal, has the confidence to take on a big free as well. One super player. Now, can he make it? Will it come in from right to left sufficiently? It, it's got to be a case of going up to the technology. It looked wide, Jar. it actually looked wide. If it is a wide, that's McKenna miss and McShane miss. Two huge scores that would have been massive for Tyrone. Certainly looked wide from uh, the angle we're watching it here to most, but uh, let's just get that confirmed anyway. No harm in using the technology, it's there to be used, and that is going to be a kneel, I think. So, a goal between them in the 52nd minute, and the pressure is applied by Tyrone right at the uh, kick out here by Mayo, and Lee Keegan broke that. Porik Ohora. Man of the match in the game against Dublin four weeks ago. Keep going, the referee says, and eventually the referee saw a second holding foul, and it's going to be a free in for Mayo. It's a long way out. Kennelly has got to be coming up to try and kick it, and this can make it a two-point game. More changes about to happen, and coming in is Jordan Flynn. Yeah, he hit a great score against Dublin the last day. This is a big kick again for Henley. He used to, he's well used to them at this stage. A great run up the field by O'Hora. It's this running game that Mayo will have. Will Tyrone tire as the game goes on, or can Mayo kick on? Two points in it if he gets this. And that's O'Hora's last contribution. Applauded by the Mayo fans. Free kick, which Rob Henley will take. 31-year-old goalkeeper from Brayfee. 
O'Hora was going well. It's not, I, I don't know, is it the, the GPS is that hits a certain number and they're off, but he was, seems to be going well. They just want energy. You need energy for that running game. They need this going over the bar as well. Has he made it? No. Only scored one of his long-range frees so far. Dara Canavan is coming on. He'll be the next sub coming in. Coming in for Tyrone, and he'll be replacing Michael O'Neill. 21-year-old Dara. This fella is good. Geez, when you're on, if you're inside there and you're a tired Mayo man, you see Dara Canavan coming on, and you see McShane coming on, it's not going to get any better your day. And you've also got the likes of Tiernan McCann to bring on loads and loads of energy there also. This should be and is Stephen Cohen's. Goal between them. Moving forward here now is Hessian. Gives it off as far as Connor Loftus. Back once again, first touch for Jordan Flynn. Now Ruan. Mayo looking busy. Flynn. Lee Keegan pressing forward into the Tyrone half of the field. Kevin McLaughlin saw the route to goal blocked, then saw Dermot O'Connor in space, about to be challenged by three players, gives it off, here's an opportunity, it fell to Brian Walsh, and Brian Walsh is going to require, it's gone wide. Yeah, that was a poor miss. I was actually watching Brian Walsh while that was unfolding. He hugged the sideline, he hugged it and hugged it and came in at the very last minute. That was a great chance. That was a great chance for a point, but great pressure by Tyrone. And after nine min 19 minutes of the second half, the referee has decided to give them all a break. A goal between them, Tyrone 110, Mayo 10 points. So much to talk about in that third quarter. Let's go back down to Damian Lawler. Thank you, Ger. Eamon Fitzmaurice is beside me. Eamon, can we see the impact of the increased tension in the last 10 minutes with all these mistakes and unforced errors? Definitely, Damian. I think that both teams are struggling to get scores. Mayo converted two out of six in that uh, quarter. Tyrone got one out of six, but obviously, crucially, that was the goal. Mayo had the two goal chances, the missed penalty and the Tommy Conroy chance, and that goal has obviously been critical so far. I think another feature is Tyrone's backs are brilliant at identifying danger, doubling up as Mayo are attacking and coming in numbers. And um, Tyrone's long kick out is, oh yeah, the, the penalty was just shown there in the miss. Uh, great ball in there for Myler and the goal for Cahill McShane. Obviously a huge score. And like we said, it was the only score that Tyrone got in that quarter. Um, Mayo have been the second half team all season long. They're going to have to really drive it on for the last quarter. There still is only the goal in it, but uh, we're going to need something big for Mayo to pull it out as Tyrone are playing well. Thanks, Eamon. Back to you, Ger. Thanks indeed, Davian. So, Tyrone management, Joe McMahon there as well in the background. Wondering. Just over 15 minutes to play. That third quarter where we had a goal by Kahlbeck Shane and we had uh, two points by Mayo. We had misses, most notable one, the penalty after some 42 minutes. So advantage to Rome to most, but still anyone's game. Anyone's game, Jar, anything can happen. It's a funny old game. There's been a lot of mistakes in the game, a lot of turnovers possibly, but it's really, really tense. It's an exciting game. I you love watching these types of games. Tyrone in the driving seat, but we'll see what happens. From this kick out, it's uh, Mayo who win it, and it's Paddy Durkin who takes off. Look at the man go, about to be challenged by Frank Burns. Burns did enough to veer him off out left. They recycle. And it's kicked there by Connor Loftus into the goalkeeper's hands. Morgan has Brian Kennedy exchanging passes and then back out as far as Peter Hart from Erigel Kieroin. Oh, challenged there vigorously by Brian Walsh, who had a very good scoring opportunity just before the water break. Yet to score in the match. Frank Burns looking up. Dara Canavan calling for it on the near side, gives it to Sladen instead. Slicing that one down. Cahal McShane blocked out there well by Oshin Mullen. Mullen now storming forward, 65 metres out from his own goal, up to the opposing half. Plays it to Aidan O'Shea. Who's got the big finish in them now in the 134th All-Ireland Football Final? Conroy 
Back to Stephen Cohen. Lazily in as far as Ryan O'Donoghue, challenging Peter Hart. Then knocked over, but the referee says accidentally so. Stephen Cohen all the way back to Lee Keegan. They're nursing their possession carefully now. They need to make it count, looking to be productive. Loftus lets his boot through that one. And away, way right of the target. Yeah, that's a poor miss. There's been a lot of misses. Brian O'Donoghue has missed the gun. They had Tommy Conroy's goal chance miss. You had the penalty miss. There's an awful amount of them kicking on. And the key thing for Tyrone is if they could got up the field and kick their one or two or three scores, it'd be way tougher for Mayo. But they're not doing that either. So Mayo are still in the game here. But they are missing a lot of chances, Ger. Ben McDonald comes into midfield in place of a tiring Brian Kennedy. Kennedy was on a yellow card from early on in the game. He did well to avoid any trouble after that. Ben McDonald was outstanding against Kerry in the uh, semi-final. Both semi-finals, of course, going to extra time. There could be extra time here as well. Boric Hampsey, hoping he will be the one to step up to collect the Sam Maguire Cup. Out it comes via Ben McDonnell. Con Kilpatrick. Ooh, difficult one there for the Tyrone player to take. Stephen Cohen did remarkably well. And he's come forward again now here. An important moment. Cohen challenged. Still going forward. Kevin McLaughlin kicking up over the shoulder and kicking it over the bar. That's what they've needed. Some one of the experienced guys, 33-year-old Kevin McLaughlin, in his 68th championship match to lift the spirits once again and make it a two-point game. Great drive from Cohen. I thought he was going to get caught out to McLaughlin and over the bar, a brilliant score for Mayo. Two points in it again, Ger. They're never gone. Mayo are never gone. And Darren Cohen has come on. Remember the point that he got in the game laid on against Dublin? He replaces Brian Walsh. Both teams now have made three changes. Long, long kick out. Brilliant fetch by Con Kilpatrick. Into space here. It's Conor McKenna. Chance to finish it off, maybe, with McCurry. Darren McCurry kicks his, or touches in, his fifth ever championship goal. It comes after 59 minutes. 2.10 to 11 points. What a catch by Tom Kilpatrick. Back at the other end, it's Darren Cohen and Mayo who once again face a giant size challenge. Are they capable of it? They have about 12 minutes plus stoppage time still to go. And they are behind by five points. Lee Keegan. Lee Keegan gets them back into it immediately with a point here. Great response from Lee Keegan, but that was an unbelievable score for, for Throne. You had Con Kilpatrick, I think it was McKenna. You talk about decision making under pressure. He knew McCurry was on the other side and put a perfect ball across him. Had he gone himself, probably would have missed. Unbelievable by McKenna. We were saying he could have gone off Ger only for that. He created a goal there. Brilliant. Once again, ball dropped into the middle of the field. Ender Hessian wins it this time. Just over 10 minutes of the final remaining. Lee Keegan out as far as Tommy Codroy. Mayo looking to get the next score. Keegan got the last. All the way up is one of three. If Tyrone start to get indisciplined, Mayo can get back into the game even more. Yeah, I was just thinking it's been a clean enough game. We were thinking maybe that the ref would be busy in this game. Yes, there's been a couple of incidents, but nothing too hectic at all at all. That goal was absolutely massive for Tron. It's two goals they've scored. They've missed a couple of points, but two goals is absolutely huge, Ger. A huge ask for Mayo here. An absolutely huge match. They've come with answers uh, so many times, but this could be a tough one for them. They're back to within three points again, Tomas. It's a one-score game. 2-10 to 13 points. Anything is possible with Mayo. Anything is possible with Tyrone as well, of course. Yeah, we'll have 12 or 13 more minutes of this, Ger. A lot of things can happen in 12 or 13 minutes. Morgan kicking it out as far as Peter Hart. Aidan O'Shea trying to win possession back, but it's Hart is the one who looks far more composed. S slipping was Myler, man who set up the first goal for them through Cahill McShane. 
Niall Morgan. Two points already against his name. Myler again. Great engine. Wonderful endurance flair. Back to Hampsey again. Peter Hart came on the scene just after the three All-Ireland wins in the noughties. A very assured McGeary playing that one in. Bounces there in front of Con Kilpatrick, who takes enormous credit for setting up the second goal. Eventually, after the chaos back there, it's Oshin Mullen who plays it safely as far as Aidan O'Shea and roared on by the fans of the Connor champions, they take it back into the Tyrone half of the field again. Kevin McLaughlin, outside it comes towards Ryan O'Donoghue. O'Donoghue trying to dodge past McKernan, getting it onto the right boot, and he misses again. Too many wides at this stage, that's nine against seven for Tyrone. Yeah, they're racking up, he did the right thing. Could he have actually continued on and got closer to the to the goal? Ryan O'Donoghue has been absolutely brilliant for Mayo today. Yes, missed the penalty, but he won't stop trying. He had another good chance there. They are missing a lot of chances, Ger, there's no doubt about that. James Horan and his selectors there just wondering and worrying are they going to lose a second final in a row for Fergal Logan and Brian Duher, Ulster champions, now looking to be All-Ireland champions in maybe 10 minutes from now. This was Conor McKenna. That was a very wise piece of judgment on his part to play it nicely into the path of McCurry, who was outside, there you see, outside the small rectangle when the pass was made. Yeah, the big thing for Mayo is, can they do it when the questions are posed? About 10 minutes to go, two points down. This is going to be thrown at them. If they lose this game, that they didn't have the answers once again when Tyrone looked them in the eyes. Derek Hanavan cleverly back there picking it up. Hamsey. Well, they have their three-point advantage now. The clock is the enemy of Mayo. Tyrone hoping to frustrate their Western opponents. I think Mayo will create chances, Jar. If Mayo take chances, they'll create enough of them. If Tyrone overdo it, they could get themselves into trouble as well. But there was nobody over there on Michael McKernan. And across went Dermot O'Connor to put a, a belated challenge. McKernan still got it in. Hart is way up there now. Look where he is, Petey Hart, and won that absolutely superbly. And a free in, and a chance to tap it over from 20 metres out. That is some catch by a brilliant footballer. Unbelievable. He was down corner back here in front of our eyes. He has changed his role. He's a man-marking man this year. He used to be coming forward. That's an absolute huge score for Tyrone. Up the field, just when Mayo are missing, Tyrone come up and get another score. That's back, massive. Back out to four points again. Dermot O'Connor. It's a long, long way to carry the ball now, all the way up there. He spotted a player in space, and that player was Darren Cohen. Gives it off to Conor Myler, or Conor Loftus, rather. Loftus ready to make an angle, maybe, coming through here, lost his way completely. No foul on him. That's, that's absolutely a, a bad miss by Mayo. They had time, they had space. I don't know, is it that they were so tired? Tyrone have been absolutely brilliant at defence. They left him out in the space on the left. When it came in a certain length, they actually made contact and turned over. Sludden kept it going back there. Even in tight situations like that, Tyrone have been masterful. That pass wasn't the best. Dermot O'Connor giving it to Tommy Conroy, who scored right at the very beginning of the match. We haven't seen enough from him since. Had a very good goal chance. They need to make this. Can he make it? Yes, he can. Two for Tommy. Another for Mayo. So we're once again back to a one-score game. Three between them. Could have been called on steps if we were being very strict about it. It's happened a few times this year, but that's a huge score. Tommy will always take you on, always go for it. That's a great score. That's young Aidan Orm coming on there for just his second game, replacing Conor Loftus. I believe he's been doing very, very well in training, and they had a match in Limerick A versus B recently, and he excelled in that. Some people even thought he might actually make it. Paul Donaghy is also in, as you can see, number 19. And the player going off there is going to be Conor McKenna. 
Yeah, the players on the pitch, Jar, have to be wrecked. The intensity, the pace, the speed of this game has been huge. McKernan again against Orm. But look at the clock. Just got four minutes of the 70 remaining. Great ball. It's a fabulous ball as far as Fawdy Hampsey. Tyrone are now making those moves into space, making it easy for the man in possession to find the colleague. And here comes Cahill McShane again, toying with the Mayo cover. Back once again to his captain. Paul Donaghy. We're very glad to get back out there onto Croke Park and get some championship experience. First year at this level. Connor Myler holding, teasing, tormenting Stephen Cohen. And as a result of all of that, it's Dara Canavan who comes in and fists it over the bar. A championship All-Ireland winning point, maybe, for Dara Canavan, like his dad did so often in the past. A oh, brilliant score, cuteness at its best. Take the hand pass, take the score, drive another nail into them. Paddy Durkin got caught, I don't know what he was looking at, he was looking at some runner on through. Great score from Canavan. Lee Keegan. One of the older heads who certainly stood up here and was counted and delivered. They need more of that, but they're running out of minutes. They're going to look back at the missed chances, Jarrett. It's the story of the match from a Mayo point of view, the missed chances that they've had. Aidan O'Shea. Cohen. There's two Cohens on there right now. Cousins. Stephen Cohen started the game. And that kick is by Jordan Flynn, and it's very wayward, under pressure, stressed, and it doesn't produce anything. And there are still four points between them. Ten wides now for... James Horan's side. Yeah, Tyrone are so organised, Jared. They know what they're doing, even if they're a half hour back and a wing back. He knows what he's doing. He's going to slot in and do the exact same thing. They know their own game inside out. And they've had just the one year, and even that, a COVID interrupted year, to try and get it all right. But great credit to Fergal Logan and Brian Dewar. Under pressure right now, Darren Cohen. He needs to get it up and over the bar, but he drops it short. And that time a foul committed by Dermot O'Connor on Niall Morgan. In discipline now by Mayo. Yeah, I'm not going to mention the obvious, but if Tyrone get up the field here and get a score, Jar, it's just heartbreaking for Mayo, creating chances and not being able to take them. Derek Canavan, Aidan O'Shea collided there with uh, one of the... Tyrone players, this is a cross here, McCurry, that's Donaghy, looking to try and free himself up, back, back out it comes, here's a chance, a really good chance, oh, well blocked by the goalkeeper from Derek Canavan's effort, and eventually fisted up and over the bar, it's McCurry, and he's now got a goal and four points in this match, that was the block originally there from Rob Henley, but it's finishing very strongly now for Tyrone, and the Ulster champions are odds on at this stage, five points in front as we're into the 69th and 70th minute. Brilliant vision by Conor Myler there, absolutely brilliant. He put the ball in for the McShane goal as well. Well done, Henley, great save. What can Mayo do about it? Ryan O'Donoghue, they need a goal quickly from somewhere, if they're to have any hope whatever. Jordan Flynn, and that ball was thrown and it's a free against him. I don't know about that. If he, if he actually made contact with the ball, I've seen out the field when you're up standing up and giving that hand pass that it's been given. It obviously is not being given there, and it may all look like they're in trouble here. Jared, they're running out of time. They've had chances. They haven't taken them. How, if that goal went in, Tommy Conroy's goal or the penalty, would we have a different story here? Throne have been absolutely brilliant in the second half. They've had their own misses, but they've got the crucial goals, and goals win you all Ireland. They've also had this. My goodness. Players should uh, know that there are so many cameras around here trying to get away with that. There are more cameras here than you can find in Dublin Airport, for heaven's sake. And it's a red card. It's gone from bad to worse, and Machu Ruan has got himself a red card, and he's off. Now, what's the story here? with Con Kilpatrick. Pure frustration there. If the two of them are swiping, it's two red cards. 
Mayo have lost one man in stoppage time. Referee still doing his note taking. And he's got a yellow for Con Kilpatrick. I didn't see the full incident, Chair. Obviously, Matty Rowan was done for striking. Con Kilpatrick wasn't. I'd love to see it again. Well, what a sad way for Rowan and for Mayo to finish out this contest. Five between them. A tale of missed goal opportunities during the third quarter. Kilpatrick now wearing number 28. You have to say from the word go, Tron have been absolutely huge. Yes, they've made mistakes. Yes, they've missed some scores, certain scores. They've defended brilliantly all day. May have created chances, but a lot of those chances were missed because of the pressure by Tyrone. Just over four of the six minutes still to go. And a very nice position for Tyrone to be in. There's Toulouse, collected by Oshin Mullen. Aidan O'Shea allowed to run on there as far as Dara Cohen. Ryan O'Donoghue. Seven points to his credit, and that was also cynical on the part of Michael McKernick. Play continues, and it's all the way up there, but intercepted well by Peter Hart. And Hart gets it out to a colleague as far as Kieran McGeary. Then he's taken down, and it's very messy right at the end here, and unnecessarily so. Yeah, they have to go for it. They have to go for goals, so they're going to take chances. They're not going to put the ball down. There's five points in it. Three and a half minutes to go. Of course, they're going to have to take chances, and with that pressure comes mistakes and if they're not clinical it's not going to happen for them yellow card for McKernan so that is a total of three yellow cards dished out by referee Joe McQuillan to the Ulster champions and now it's the turn of uh, Tiernan McCann to come on thought he might be on a little earlier a crestfallen James Horan lost in the final last December against Dublin Many people's favourites today to win. So much sentiment, so much good sentiment all over the country. But James Horan knows full well, and these fans know full well, you get nothing without doing it on the park. And that's what Tyrone have done, and Mayo haven't done enough of. Conor Myler. Just over another two minutes, two and a half minutes to go. McShane... His goal was so important, seconds after coming on in the match. Played in here as far as Paul Donaghy. He'd love to have his name alongside one of the scores in the 2021 All-Ireland Final. It's got to be hauled back anyway. Only a matter of time now, Tomas. Yeah, I mean, Mayo have been heroic this year. There's no doubt about that. What they did against Galway in that second half, what they did against Dublin in that second half, but Throne, I've said it already, Cavan, Donegal, Monaghan, Kerry, and now Mayo. What a turnaround. Fergal Logan, Brian Dewar, from where they were in Killarney, the six goals they conceded down in Killarney, being written off, McShane gone, Dara Canavan gone, to come back the way they've come back, and to have the whole country going against you, everybody hoping for Mayo to win, and to come up and give a performance, don't give a damn what anybody thinks about you or says, have a plan, stick to it, an absolute awesome performance from Tyrone today. Niall Morgan, this is a lovely, comfortable position to be in. There was no great pressure on him there for once. In an All-Ireland final, he stretches out the lead, and there are two goals between them. And as you can see, just over a minute remaining. And another All-Ireland final loss is about to be Mayo's. Dermot O'Connor. Tommy Codroy, two points in the final. That's Oshin Mullen playing it in and then just lacking in cohesion inside. Not decisive enough, not quick enough. Up against the Tyrone side, wonderfully coached by these two men, Fergal Logan and Brian Duher. They got it together, they had a game plan, they had the players down there. Darren McCurry with a goal and four points. What a contribution by him. Mayo finishing the game with 14 players following the red card issued to Mathieu Ruan. Nearly there, last 30 seconds, Conor Myler. Don't know how many people would have thought 
at the beginning of the championship or even the beginning of the season when we started the league back in May that Tyrone will be the ones stepping up to collect the Sam Maguire Cup at the end of it all. Mayo still going. Jordan Flynn, Paddy Durkin, leaving it there for Tommy Conroy, up to the 20-metre line, then the foul committed, and the game halted, and there'll be a, a late, late free for Mayo, and a yellow card issued as well. And this one is issued to the number 22, and that's Ben McDonnell. Well, the records will show that Ryan O'Donoghue kicked eight points in today's final. Simply not enough. And the Tyrone fans are on their feet. They're waiting for the final whistle from Joe McQuillan. They had wonderful performers all around the place. Their defence was superb. They were quick. They were smart about what they did. They took their goal chances. Mayo didn't take theirs. They play on into the almost into the eighth minute of additional time ball handled on the ground free kick to Mayo referee says bring it forward but they're five behind Aidan O'Shea booting it in two against two in there bounces back out and in comes Niall Snodden to collect it's Michael McKernan with ball in hands challenged by some Mayo players fouled and the free kick to Tyrone and they are loving every second of this absolutely loving it it was a typical Tyrone performance time is probably up Ger it is up there's the final whistle it's Tyrone's turn to celebrate it's their All-Ireland final the joy for Fergal Logan and Brian Dewar champions for the first time since 2008 when Brian Dewar himself was the captain many people made them the outsiders others couldn't quite make up their mind as to who they thought would win it but on the day they were pretty decisive victors I think it's one once of the again best all Ireland's in terms of a team coming from nowhere Ger, in the middle of March in the middle of the National League to come up here and to win defy all the odds everything have COVID thrown into it whatever you threw at them they answered it I think it's been an amazing performance by them Mayo were the team that were going to ask the questions they did they created the chances they missed them but absolutely outstanding from Throne there today marvellous performance you're quite right there's Michael McKernan celebrating but you have to feel once again for all the Mayo fans who made the long journey across once again and are watching this in many many parts of the world they feel the anguish of defeat beaten at the final hurdle by a Tyrone side that had the measure of the, the college champions. Yeah, the same old stuff would be thrown at Mayo, but I think they were brilliant there today. They created chances, they didn't take them. They met a Tyrone side that were always going to grow in confidence if they got those scores. The goals were the big difference. You look at the goal chance Tommy Conroy had, even the one they had in the first half, the penalty miss, it could have been so, so different. Mayo have been there so often, it's going to be very hard for them to take. But you have to, I mean, the performances from all over the field, the absolute concentration, the game plan they stuck to, didn't get their scores all the time. But the middle third back, Ger, what a performance, one of the best performances from a defensive point of view. I've seen from Tron in a long time. Yeah, they certainly had the passion and the intensity. They're the champions. Let's go down to Damien. Thank you, Ger. Peter Hart, congratulations on a momentous day for Tyrone. What a performance from you guys. Uh, yeah, unbelievable. Um, everybody says it, but when you finally get here, it's very, very hard putting the words. Uh, a lot of years, uh, a lot of work from unbelievable legends of Tron football. Whole way from Nicky. From Tony Donnelly, Fergal McCann, God rest them. They put in the work. And these men came along this year. And it's just been, it's just been one mission. And it's been unbelievable. You've had some journey, PD, coming in with Mickey. Probably missing out on the glory years, but trying so hard to get what you got today. Did you ever doubt that the team could do it? Or the transition came that you could go ahead and achieve great things? There's massive belief in Tyrone. Every year, players, fans, families, just know that there's... People that are die-hard footballers in Tyrone, and I started long before I came along, and 
we just want to continue that and try and stay at the top table and every year you have that belief but to finally get there it's just some relief and it's unbelievable Brian Dewar Fergal Logan what difference did they make to your setup after the, the excellence that you've had previously uh, look them men are just uh, like incredible the detail the planning the preparation but it's not just them there's, a, there's maybe 20 men with them putting in the air Sui Marty there's some video work super medical team that was really called into action this year and only for all them men there must be maybe 55 60 men behind the scenes only for I mean if everybody pushing you don't get days like today and we're so thankful and grateful for them all the goals win games Petey the two goals today were obviously well planned off the training field because they worked a treat and they killed off Mayo yeah look we've serious forwards serious six and then a serious six behind them and when the chances came they buried them they absolutely buried him. Petey Hart, go off and enjoy your celebrations with your teammates. Congratulations. Well done to Peter Hart. I mean, we do feel very sorry for Mayo players. We talk all the time about the number of Mayo players who've been through so many years of hard graft and tough days. But then you look at somebody like Peter Hart, Sean Kavanagh, who's also been around for so, so long, has had so many doubters, has had to put up with so much as well. What must it mean to the likes of him? Look, it means everything, and, and Petey's a very genuine character, and, and someone who even sacrificed a lot in his, in his sort of even, I know he went part-time to try and win All-Ireland a few years ago, he's a teacher, and um, I remember having that conversation with him and asking him if he was wise, but he was so determined, and, and, and it just wasn't working out, obviously, but today it has. I'm just going to briefly interrupt you, because one man who had a massive impact yes, yet again today was the man with number one on his back, Niall Morgan, is now with Damien. Thank you very much, Joanne. Niall, you've got the serenity prayer very close to your chest. Did you need it today? What way did you see the game going? I, mean, just, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say. We, like, we came against Dublin 18. We thought we were in control. We got blew out of the water before half-time. Today we stayed calm, we stayed in control. May we come back, we knew. We knew if we were going to win, we were going to need goals. So everybody always said, Tron can't get goals, but we got the goals today, it won us the game, so. Or, just the goal that Carl Machine got, it clearly came off the training ground. You were just led by two points at half time, Niall, so was that the message? Go along, try and exploit the Mayo rear guard when the chance outrises. No, it's just, like, Carl's just a completely different person than everybody else, you know. He offers you so much, and he had his struggles last year, and we, we missed him, and, you know, he's... he's a, He's a bit of an enigma, like some people. You know, he's Marmite, but don't know how we're taking him at times. Me and him are our fights uh, nearly every night at train, but I tell you what, he'll get a big kiss tonight, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he'll get a big, a giant kiss. Uh, years, years go by, it's hard enough to get out of Ulster and Isle. Do you appreciate the journey that you've been on the last few years, despite maybe the hiccups you've had along the way? And you have to be mentally strong yourself in your position and your experience as Tyrone number one. Yeah, look, I've been knocked every year since I started playing for Throne. And you've got to have a serious belief in yourself that you can keep digging, you can keep going. Uh, to get out of Ulster is a massive battle, but uh, you know what? It makes it all the sweeter coming here today, doing it the, the front door road, and, uh, just unbeaten in the, in the championships. Unbelievable. Just a final question then. For Tyrone this year, what was a key difference in the 2021 season from the new management that helped you build on what Mickey Hart has done over the past decade and a half also? Look, there's no... Like, Mickey Hart... The foundations of Mickey Hart set in Tyrone he took us from a county of, of uh, close and we're close and we're close to a county that contests all Ireland and he kept us at the top table for so long. We came in this year and we were told we're not at the top table. We're close and we're close and we're close but we can't get over the line. And that's what we were told by our own backroom team. And we just had the serious belief that, that we can do it. I've said when I first came in, if I didn't think so we're going to win all Ireland, I wouldn't be here. And today we've got it. Was there a turning point in the season that you knew you could turn the corner and get over that line? I don't, I don't know if there's like a specific uh, turning point as such, but you know, there's just a massive belief that we could do it. And like, this is just this is why you play. Like, this is it. Well, congratulations, Tyrone champions. Back to your teammates, Niall. You. Enjoy Thank yourself. You. It's still just slowly sinking in there for Niall Morgan and probably for the rest of the Tyrone players as well. You could get such a sense, um, Sean, of the siege mentality that is clearly there in the Tyrone <laughs> team from almost everything that Niall said in that interview. Yeah, uh, it's always been there. It's, it's part of our DNA in Tyrone, but... It works be for you. Beneath the, beneath the siege, Joanne, there's a ridiculous amount of talent and a ridiculous amount of motivation. I know a lot has spoken about the likes of Mayo's high-intensity work rate and, and 
you know the, the fact they keep going to the well these thrown lads do something similar they, they've had they've had that inside them they, they, i've kind of been waiting for it to come and, and i've watched it this year step by step come i remember whenever i finished up my captaincy in 2017 the last thing i said to the lads he says i'm telling you you, I, you are going to win all there in the next few years and i can't wait to meet you in the hogan stand steps i wish you could jump off this platform and go and grab go on, them right off. now go on jump <laughs> off my finals no look here so, so proud of the guys like such good men but we're sorry to pull you away. Sorry, Pat, go on. Well, do you know, I mean, let's challenge the narrative that you know, the 31 counties hate Tyrone and we all hate Tyrone. Look, we have to stand back and admire what is an absolutely brilliant football team. And I emphasise that word team because from 1 to 23 or 26, they play as a team, their composure. I look at their football smarts, their football intelligence as defenders, as attackers, their composure on the ball, their quick hands, the variety to their play this year, the hand passing, the kick passing. Look, from start to finish, they were the better team. They're the best team in Ireland. And I salute them as All-Ireland champions, deserving All-Ireland champions, and very, very good All-Ireland champions that earned it the hard way. With tough matches, Donegal, Monaghan, Kerry, and here today. So tough yet again for James Horan and for the Mayo players. I, I, I don't think too many people actually hate Toronto. No, they don't, do they not just not admire no. them. No, we admire them, I'm sure. Okay, we can see that poor Campsey is about to become the third Tyrone captain to get his hands on Sam Maguire. Jer. Law more Kelore Shaw, the got ball to come in low class scale, and just the got air and the car noy. Bogardicus lets your own. Dimmership goes sour one you. The Alon Jack three, the Jane Eagwith, a cocked out Sardic Shabir. Cobron Lamrio, the Rowan Law Livino, a cocked out, actually, for no guitar grip, makes him a rational reaction, shall the coon of day. Ladies and gentlemen, I would ask you to please give a round of applause to Joe McQuillan, our referee, and his team for her contribution to today's game. Our gratitude also to our sponsors, AIR, AIB, and Supervalue. And Tyrone fans, as you head off into the night to celebrate this wonderful occasion. Please remember the pandemic is still in our communities and as we head into the most important part of the GA calendar of the club championship, we need to be extremely vigilant. Accorda, the Coramuk, beyond Coramuk, Lena Hull. I'm unable to present the trophy to Padraig Hampsey from Coal Island, but what I can do... is invite Parik on behalf of the Tyrone senior football team and be on behalf of Tyrone people all over the world to accept the Sam Maguire Cup, Pog Articus. GAA President Larry McCarthy with the Sam Maguire Cup presented to Tony Hampsey. It's going to Tyrone, All-Ireland champions for the fourth time, All-Ireland champions for 2021. I'm delighted here to be sat in this place today, on this day, in the company, on behalf of the Throne people and the Throne team. <laughs> to win the All-Ireland Senior Football Championship is a privilege and an honour, and it's inspired by past and present generations of Gaelic Throne, who have worked so hard to get our county here. Let's remember them, and thanks very much, men. To our GAA, our officials, stewards and volunteers in every county, you've made this whole day possible. We as Throne footballers would not be here without you. From our county board, 
our clubs, our GA volunteers, our sponsors, Tom Fab, Club Tyrone, and all other sponsors, and of course, you the supporters. <laughs> to my fellow players, what can I say? It's been my privilege to train along these boys all year. You've risen to every chance put in front of you. You've done everything that was asked of you from day to day. And you've done it with humour and generosity of spirit. Because of this, you honour yourselves, you honour your families, your clubs, your county and the GA. You are true champions. <laughs> Moving on to our families, partners, friends, colleagues and employers. You are also champions today. Thank you all. This victory is for you. We can't forget Mayo. No other county provides more inspiration to the rest of us than the players and supporters of Mayo. You inspire the rest of us, both on and off the field. It's been our privilege and honour to share this field and this contest with you. Thank you for that. As we complete our 21 journey, I want to close by looking at where we are standing here. It said that successful people find the right places for themselves. Successful leaders, however, find the right places for others. We stand here today because of two remarkable leaders. Fergal and Brian. They along, they along with their hidden but vitally important backroom team have masterminded our success here today. Thanks very much, man. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. I know the players, know the people of Tyrone, know how much thought, planning, the time they have poured into this team. We are blessed to have them. For all of us, thank you, Fergal and Brian. That's it. It's time to leave Croker and take Sam back to Tyrone. There you go. So poor Campsy. I don't think it's going to be having uh, too many drone fans leaving Croker anytime soon as he becomes drone captain number three to lift that famous cup. And Kevin McStay, Jamal said to do it against all the odds in many ways, given what has happened, how they had to come through Ulster, the teams they had to come up against, and obviously the issues they had with the, the COVID outbreak in their team. It's actually an amazing story. Now, when you trace it back to the beginning, and that there were, I won't say rank outsiders, but they weren't really in the reckoning. And then the COVID hits. It's, it's actually an amazing story. I said it was poised at half time. The game was beautifully poised. But then Tyrone just blew it wide open, took the game over. Goals, the golden goals. They were the ticket to the, to the Sam Maguire for sure. The missed penalty would be the talking point. But I think no question but that Tyrone with the better team. You know, five point win in the end, two points at half time. Dominated the second half of the game really dramatically. I'm not too sure Sean Cavanagh Sean is actually missing in, at all. He's not in studio <laughs> with us. Sean <laughs> is practically on the steps along with all of those videos. videoing on his phone. Uh, my heart is anyway. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going on here. You can talk amongst yourselves. How many of them have you managed to make eye contact with and give a big thumbs up uh, to? I will look, my little brother Colm's down there too. He's standing waving at me as well. And, and look, Ben, ben works for us and he's shouting up. And yeah, look, I, I've caught the eye of a few of the guys. McNamee was there for a long time with me. Yeah. Morgan, oh, McCurry, all those guys have been there for so long. You go away, Sean, we'll continue. We can. <laughs> I, think, I think it really practically yeah. has already. But, but, but did, you, did you, in many ways, when everybody was talking about all the four Mayo players who've been around so long and it hasn't happened for them, was there that sense in Jerome? Well, well, look at us. Yeah, like, I think everyone obviously feels sorry for Mayo because they've been to the final so many times, but I would say that three or four of those maybe six or seven of those players have lost semi-finals and, and have been have been hurt by that and a lot of them obviously were living in the shadow of the team in the noughties that, that, that won so much three out of three so they had we always had to live in that shadow in the in, in, in the tens as such so it's just amazing to see them eventually get over the line but you know what Matty Donnelly Sorry. pity heart these guys are, are, are all now in their 30s and this could be their last chance so I'm just so delighted I, I mean uh, if I was a Tyrone man you would be proud of those as individuals as role models the way they play the game as their skill as footballers but can i just say while we're on while today is about the victors 
let's spare a thought for Mayo. You know, this is now 11 All Ireland finals. They've played seven All Ireland finals this decade. The average losing margin is less than three points. They contributed to a really fascinating, tough, tight struggle today. And you know, I said, should I have a quotation just to t say to the Mayo people? And I said, I'm not too sure whether Samuel Beckett was a J-man or whether he kicked the O'Neills, but I think his words sum up Mayo. Try again, fail again. Fail better. I can't go on. I will go on. And that's Mayo. Today is another bad day, but Mayo will bounce back. They'll fight back. They'll be there again next year, close to the final table. So commiserations to Mayo. Warriors. A great team, but fell sh well short today of yeah, truly well great All Ireland champions. And, and for anybody who's waiting to have a dig at the likes of Aidan O'Shea, he is still standing out here watching the Tyrone players as they go up one by one to uh, lift the Sam Maguire. You also have uh, Lee Keegan out in the pitch, Brendan Harris and Borgo Ora all still staying around to um, have a look at the Tyrone players once again. They're so, so used oh. to this situation. I, I, I don't think we can imagine. I, I've heard people say that, actually, you just get used to it. How do you oh, get you used don't. to that, Kelly? No, no, they, they, like, I mean, it's to win on this big day, I've never experienced it. It must be magnificent. Uh, to lose on this big day, I know a little bit about it. It's horrible. It's another country. It's shocking. Uh, and uh, the Mayo boys have to go through that again. But, you know, we were talking at the beginning. They're a young team. There was a lot of players brought through. Today they were well, they were well off it. There's, yeah. a, there, there's no wouldas or couldas or shouldas when they look back. There was moments, fleeting moments, yeah. but no, by a, but by a good bit, Tyrone were, yeah. were the better this side. This day belonged to the Ulster champions, and now Tyrone also the 2021 All Ireland champions. More.